so here we are in the last minutes of winter and uh, it's snowing here in Detroit and uh, I'm on my way to see Miss King. This is a world. This is a world. This is a world. You guys, uh, I don't know if I made it clear to you all, but we had a blackout here in Detroit and uh, it was pretty bad. It was uh, maybe four days without electricity or at least with rolling blackouts. Yeah, it was just not, it wasn't very cool. But uh, you guys know that I escaped a little bit and went to Toledo. So I was able to get some stuff done. Anyway, so that said, I am uh, coming over here. It's snow everywhere and I'm about to go up and knock on Miss King's door. Oh no, goodness gracious. Was I ringing too many times? Hello, oh Come goodness, on. you're on the phone. You might need to let me get with this, uh, get with your snow. You got a shovel? Miss okay, Kim is so, on the, Miss so Kim is else, on the what, phone. What, 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 what else you need, baby? All kinds of things going on. Do you need I see she's got some vegan snacks out for us. I'm gonna give me, give me a second. Okay, we're you gonna, want them now? We're gonna let Miss King get ready and then we'll get started. All right, so, so you've been, so what are, what are your thoughts about this whole intersectionality thing? Why is that so hard to, under, to understand? It's not a hard concept. It isn't. It's not a hard concept. And it's a concept that makes a whole lot of sense. What, what is the problem? And this woman, what is her name? Swooshy or Swishy or whatever that her name is. I think it's hey, Swayze. Swayze. We know, and I want to say, what is it about this, honey, that you, that you can't understand? You know, what do you a think fool it is? would under, uh, understand. I see it as this. In, in society, there are some of us that have all these different, um, what is it? Some of us are black, some of us are female, some of us are gay, some of us are poor, and that it goes on and on. And so we cross over. We cross over. We got so many damn issues. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. Some of us are filled with all these issues, with all these, you know, problems. Mm -hmm. And some folks ain't got them. If you're a rich white male, you don't have them. I used to tell my students all of the, all of the time when they would not do their homework, I would say, look, if your daddy is rich and white, you ain't got to do nothing. Because he gonna take care of you. But if your daddy isn't rich and white, you best be doing homework because you're going to fail. And that's how, and that's what I used to always tell them. And, and one day there was this, there was this one class I had. It had one boy in it white. Mm -hmm. So when I said it, everybody looked at him. He said, "My daddy ain't rich." <laughs> 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 Don't be looking at me. And I did my homework. I did my homework. <laughs> and as far as the vegans things going, I'm doing good. Even though we had a power shortage and I had to uh, go and buy me some food. We didn't have power, but a lot of the restaurants did. Mm. And the one vegan restaurant that is struggling here in this neighborhood, she had lines. People were lined up. Wow. So I said, maybe this will help her. People that hadn't, that never went to her restaurant, they didn't have anywhere else to go. So they went to her restaurant, and I said, oh, I hope that they really did well. So they went to Detroit Vegan Soul. They went to Vegan Soul. Yeah. Not having power can be stressful. Mm -hmm. My husband used to do a lot of camping, mm -hmm. and he had some of his equipment. That man was trying to bring some of that camping stuff with propane. I said, you ain't using that stuff in my house. You're not oh, no. going to blow my making, house up. making me laugh. Making me blow, trying to blow my house up. So he, <laughs> so oh, no. he went, out on, went out on the um, deck. Uh -huh. And he, oh, he got his little um, stove and he was boiling water for mm -hmm. us. He went to that store and he got some hot chocolate mix mm -hmm. and some oatmeal. He said, so we will, you know, be able to, you know, have this. And I'm praying. I said, Jesus, turn on my power. Turn on my power. When did you get your power? I, I We actually got our power Friday at 730. I said, Lord, thank you. 
mm-hmm. because this little camping thing, it it wasn't going to roll with me. Right. It wasn't going to roll. But I'll tell you what it did. It made me think, what about the people that don't have heat anytime? That that gas company has turned off their heat, turned off their water. Mm-hmm. What about them? And my heart went out to them and I prayed for them mm-hmm. because in this rich country, everybody should have heat. Everybody should have water and everybody should have food. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they didn't, that I, I find that to be very, very sad. But, um, we, but we got over it. That we got over it. Who is Ethelene Crockett? Ethelene Crockett was a black woman who was an obstetrician, OBGYN. Okay. Black women during that time weren't getting the best of health care. Uh, babies were, uh, black babies were um, being brought into the world by I don't know who, who. But there were two people that gave black women good health care that were OBGYNs. One was Dr. Goins. He brought me in the world. Mm -hmm. And the other one was Ethelene Crockett. Mm -hmm. Anybody that had Ethelene Crockett as a doctor, when they spoke of her, they always spoke of her as if she was a girlfriend. Because they had that type of setup where the family lived upstairs Mm -hmm. and that they would have their medical practice downstairs. But she gave great health care to black women. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't have her as a doctor because when I needed an OBGYN, when I finally turned 18, I then had her daughter. Okay. And her daughter was Ethelene Crockett Jones, who was just as open, strong, and a great doctor, just like her mother. Mm -hmm. And see, the way that it went, Dr. Goins and Dr. Um, Crockett brought you into the world, and then after you got here, then your then your pediatrician was Natalie Tanner. Okay. Okay. So for a while, I only knew of women, black women doctors. That's all I knew. So everybody loved Ethelene Crockett because of the type of doctor that she was. Mm-hmm. Her name, we signed a um, petition. Mm-hmm. Her name was placed on top of this school that deals with health sciences. Mm -hmm. We were all happy. Everything was fine. Mm -hmm. Then Detroit started having these emergency managers, first in the school district, then in the city. Mm -hmm. But those that were in the school district, all of a sudden we turn around. Ethelene Crockett's name is off of the uh, building, and it's Ben Carson. How long had Ethelene Carson's name been on the building? I would say for a good 20 years or even more, you know. Which is really not that long if, you, if you're trying to really yeah, when honor I, someone. Right. It, it, you know, it was, it was there, and then all of a sudden, ben, ben Carson's name was on it. So I started asking some of my girlfriends who were uh, teachers also. I said, when did they take Ethelene Crockett's name off of the um, building? They said, no, it isn't. I said, yes, it is. They said, but they didn't, but they didn't tell us. So then I went to the next group of people. I went to the black doctors. Mm -hmm. I said, why didn't you all fight uh, to have Ethelene Crockett's name stay on that building? Her name's off the building? Yeah, her name's off the building. They did not even know. know. It was done underhanded. I think that that the Republican Party, that the black um, Republicans Mm -hmm. think that they are behind this. Because it was during the emergency manager mm-hmm. who was run by the Republicans. And I think that's how they took off Ethelene Crockett's name. If, if they had put um, anybody else's name on that building, I would still be upset. Mm-hmm. Because I know how wonderful that Ethelene Crockett and her daughter and her daughter were. Her husband was a civil rights attorney. A real trooper later became a judge, had controversial cases. Uh, Her son, he was a judge also. So this was a dynamite family that really believed in social justice. Mm -hmm. Just the crackers were just unbelievable. 
And they take her name off and put that fool's name on there that thinks that I am an immigrant. Have mercy, Jesus. Mm. Have mercy, Jesus. I am an immigrant. Mm. Mm. 